and we welcome you to Columbus Grove High School. It is uh, non-league boys basketball on this Friday night as we edge ever so closely to the Christmas holiday. With Miles Holiday, I'm Randy Roberts. Partner, we are here in Grove. A couple of teams that got off to late starts to the basketball season for a good reason. <laughs> Had some success in uh, football, and now they are ready to go. Each team just going to play its third game of the year tonight. And where else would you rather be than right here, right now, Randy? Two teams, really. They have bright futures ahead of them. Now let's uh, talk a little bit about these two teams, partner. Let's start with the Patrick Henry, and it might be uh, more important maybe to mention the guys that won't be playing for the Patriots. Boy, they're already just decimated with injuries, both because of football and because of some non-contact drills early on in basketball. Season. Yeah, Nash Meyer, Landon Johnson, uh, two starters from a year ago, both out, going to be out the rest of the year. And then Reed Krieger is uh, out as well. He's a freshman that looked uh, uh, is, he was going to start. He was going to be, yeah, he's yeah. an absolute stud for the Patriots. Yeah. Hey, how about the drummer getting it on right there? Fantastic stuff. But still, it's a powerful lineup, Randy. This is a team that should score a lot of points throughout the year, led by Lincoln Krieger, who's a fantastic player, and Mac Heber, a guy that uh, really came on the scene last year as a freshman. He can score with the best of them. Yeah, and the best athlete of that bunch might be Thomas Smith, a uh, senior at 6'3", now kind of takes over the senior leadership role, a guy that can just absolutely jump out of the gym. <laughs> he sure can. We, we had him last year. We dunked a couple times. He's got springs in his shoes, that's for sure. Jaden Punches is a big guy at 6'4", that they're going to lean on inside. And Lane Jackson, he's going to have to have a really good game defensively here tonight for Patrick Henry and those explosive guards of Columbus Grove. Yeah, Patriots come in at 1-1. One one. They knocked off McComb 72-32. Then lost to uh, Miller City, 59-46. Brian Heber is now in his fourth year as the head coach of the Patriots. Let's take a look at the starting lineup tonight for the Bulldogs of Columbus Grove. Like Patrick Henry, got off to a late start thanks to the success that they had in football. They picked up a couple of wins here to begin the season. Started a little late, knocking off eight of 53-31. Then defeated Arlington 69-55. And they might have one of the most complete all-round basketball players and a senior here in Northwest Ohio, the 6'4 senior in Bo Burnesser. Yeah, Bo Burnesser is as good as anybody in Northwest Ohio, and he's got some really good teammates as well. Randy, they're very active on the defensive end. 18 steals or deflections per game, and a lot of times those result in easy layups on the other end. Now, Burnesser does get a little bit of help at 18 points, 8.5 rebounds, but Trenton Barraza, Talk a lot about what he can do on the football field, just as good on the basketball court as well. 14.6 and a half rebounds and landed best, stepping up at 13 and a half a game. And he talked about a guy like Thomas Smith. Well, there's one for Columbus Grove as well. One of the other starters, we'll talk about a 6'2 senior in Zach Reynolds. Yeah, Zach Reynolds, he can flat out fly. But the guy I'm really excited to see, you mentioned Barraza. He's got electric feet. 14 points and 7 rebounds a game. 6'1", 175 pounds, might be the best athlete on the floor here tonight. Columbus Grove with the first year head coach, Connor Coles, taking over after the successful run of Chris Sutter. Sutter didn't leave the cupboard, bears a lot of talent here in Grove. Yeah, a lot of times coaches leave because they see what's coming, right? And they're like, oh, I want to stick around for that. He didn't do that. He left a, a lot of good pieces here at Columbus Grove. Looking forward to what should be a good one. It's the 17th meeting all time between Patrick Henry and Columbus Grove, and we'll have it for you next year on WOSF. Radio Miles back with you here at Columbus Grove High School getting set for this non-league matchup between the Bulldogs and the Patriots of Patrick Henry. Two schools located about 20 miles or so apart across the uh, Putnam County line. Our partner, while they're going through the introductions of the starting lineups here, let's take a look at our keys to the game tonight. And let's start with the visiting Patrick Henry Patriots. Uh, number one, Randy, correct matchup. I'm really intrigued to find out how they're going to deal with Trent Barraza, who they're going to put on and make sure you get the right matchups tonight. Number two, Mac tonight. Oh, you believe it. Mac Heber, you better. You better have a good night tonight. He is fantastic. 15 points a game, five rebounds a game. Randy, he shoots 67% from behind the arc so far early in the year. And then 
punches and bunches. That's the big fella inside. He's going to have to get a lot of rebounds. Jaden punches. He is six foot four. The juniors getting seven rebounds a game. He's going to have to be solid inside for them tonight. Mac, tonight I thought you went like the blue moon on McDonald's. I did. Yeah. There yeah. we go. All right. How about keys to the game tonight for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs? First to fifty. I believe that if a Columbus Grove scores fifty points first, that means they're dictating the pace of this game. They're going to win it. Number two. Best makes you better. Boy, does he. Landon Best averages three assists a game. Make sure your eyes are on him at all times because he's going to find you. And then Bo, 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 Merry Christmas. You mentioned him in our pregame. Bo Bersener, Ber- Bernesser. There he we is go. a fantastic player. 18 points a game, nine rebounds, three steals. Might be one of the best players in Northwest Ohio. The Columbus Groves in the white patch. Henry in the red with the blue trim. Tip is one by the host Bulldogs, and we are underway. Again, this meaning 17th all-time. Grove leads the all-time series. Three ball in the corner is going to be good, and that's how we start. Kyle Hopkins knocking down the corner three. Well, Kyle Hopkins turned right away, let the Patrick Henry student section know that he's going to own that corner right in front of him. Grove leads the all-time series 11-5, to but it's Patrick Henry that's won the last two. Grove with a win uh, in 10 straight before that, and here's a nice look. Underneath, Pat Henry tries to answer. Yeah, Landon Best is going to slide over. That's why you play great help side principal. Had his eyes on the ball, slid underneath. Gets the foul committed by Lincoln Krieger. Kind of a tough call because Krieger really had to catch it, run into Best. He had no opportunity to avoid it. So the offensive foul send this one back over to the Bulldogs. Just on the way. Scoreboard tonight brought to you by Hawker Drywall. As second three attempt, that one off the iron, but an offensive rebound pulled down. Trent Brazza, Brazza is going to lose the hand. Oh, he's able to save it. Nearly lost it. Now ball is out of bounds in the corner, and turnover is committed, and it will go back over to back again. Yeah, well, one of the cardinal sins, right? You get a rebound and you bring it down to your waist. You're letting everybody have a chance to steal it, and a little pressure now to start this game out by Columbus Grove. Grove coming into the half court. Looks like a little one-two-two. Patch Kennedy able to break that, and again, our scoreboard tonight. Brought to you by Hawker Drywall. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Yeah, you go 1 2 2, Randy, at the half court because you got the quickness of Barraza as the tip of the spear. He's almost like a one man press on his own. Now, Patriots take a little bit of time. Down 3 0 early on, which should be a good matchup. A couple of teams expected to go pretty deep in this basketball season. Here's a kick out. Heber trying to answer the three. That one off the side of the iron. Offensive rebound pulled down in traffic by Lincoln Krieger. Can't get it to go. It looks like he's going to go to the free throw line. And just working the weak side. Comes off the miss by Heber. And Krieger almost could have been a three-point opportunity. Just a little bit short on his putback. But that's a guy that understands where rebounds are going. You saw him move to that low block on the shot. 80% of all rebounds go to the weak side. So here's Lincoln Krieger, who's 10 of 16 at the free throw line. Now 11 of 17 as he knocks down the first. Gives Patrick Henry its first points of the evening. And he will make them both. 3-2 on our Hawker drywall scoreboard. It's the Bulldogs will bring this one into the front court with Hopkins. Hopkins that handoff for Barraza. Barraza will get it underneath. And Bo Burnesser able to get to the basket and score. Now, if your man is trailing you, you go ahead and attack the glass. Barraza finds him. Great to move without the basketball by Burnesser. Burnesser able to turn up, find an opening, get in, extend this lead. Now 5-2, back to three. Smith with the ball fake. Nice jump stop to get into the lane. Gets the extra bounce. And Thomas Smith will get the first field goal tonight for the Patriots. Uh, just a little bit of glimpse of his athletic ability that we mentioned in the pregame. Barraza at the wing, here's the kick out, three ball, no good from Burnesser. Nice job in traffic, the rebound there, Lincoln Krieger. Krieger able to bring this one up the floor himself. He's going to take over at the point this year for the Patriots. Gets a pseudo screen from Heber, really Heber just trying to get out of the way. Matt Heber, son of the head coach, Brian Heber. Nice looking sophomore, trying to create a little bit of space. It looks like he's able to draw the foul. That's a tough matchup when they're able to use their height and their quickness. Matt, that's a big dude at six foot five, and he's dribble driving by Kyle Hopkins. You see uh, why they're so excited about their 
opportunity at Patrick Henry. With, you got guys that are 6'5 and 6'4. They can put it on the ground and attack the basket. That is tough to defend. Hopkins is going to pick up that foul. His first. There's the entry pass to Krieger. Krieger draws the double. Kick out. Three's blocked in the corner. As Burnesser able to get over defensively and knock that out of the sky. Now watch Burnesser. He closes out properly and then goes left hand. So he can extend and say, uh-uh, not tonight. No way. Glob inside. Can't get it to go. As Heber had the opportunity, now it is the Bulldogs in transition. And finishing is Barraza with a left-hand layup. Yeah, Barraza affecting this game defensively. He had an assist on the last possession that time to run away. And how about the finish with the left hand? Pushes that lead back to three, seven to four here. Still four and a half minutes left to go opening quarter. Patrick. Krieger trying to go up, sorry. And Patrick Henry not doing too bad against this pressure early. But remember, this is one of those things that wears you down throughout the course of a game. That looks like Krieger is going to try to go one-on-one -on -one with Kyle Hopkins. Hopkins knocks that out of bounds as he slides on the floor. Patrick Henry able to get this inbound in. This will come in to Lane Jackson. Yeah, Columbus Grove loves to attack the passing lanes. Almost a steal that time by Reynolds. Jackson, two Hebers, they work it around to Krieger. Patrick Henry doing a really good job with the spacing offensively, trying to get some mismatches on the perimeter work one-on-one. -on -one. Jackson looks a little hesitant to shoot after having the last three-pointer blocked by Bernasser. Uh, working around to the right side. Good step back. That one left a little short. Bernasser comes away with a rebound as it is the Bulldogs that move in transition again. Second time in a row. They beat everyone down the floor. This time it's Landon Best with the easy bucket. Now how about the Outlet pass to find Bess streaking towards the basket. Krieger trying to take on a double team. Nice ball fake. Can't get it to roll. And Burnesser one hands the rebound. And now a third time. Quickly down the floor and another basket. This time it's Hopkins. And Patrick Henry wants a timeout. Now you're going to see another great pass up the floor. It's Landon Best. Having just three assists a game. He finds Kyle Hopkins. And how about the catch by Hopkins and going up right away? These Bulldogs, they like to run. And they've run well in transition. That is three baskets in a row, partner. They've just beaten everyone down the floor. Yeah, that is just nothing but hustle, right? And Brian Heber calls the timeout. One, you got to start making shots because it stops them from running. And then two, if you don't make it, you better get your little pitter-patter feet back on defense and guard up. So 11-4 to four here early on, 3.29 left to go in our opening quarter. Patch Kendrick with just a quick 30-second timeout just to settle their guys down. Knew they were going to be in for a uh, dog fight tonight. Now good call on that one. Columbus Grove the Bulldogs dog fight. I get it. I see what you did. Continuing the pressure off the inbound following the timeout as we see a substitution it looks like uh, Cal Schrader 5'9 sophomore number 15 had the basketball momentarily there for the Patriots. Yeah, you just can't be content to break the pressure. You got to make them pay for it. How about Lincoln Krieger? The pull-up jumper is good. Now you get the feeling that if they're going to win this basketball game, he's going to have to have around 20 points tonight. Step inside and a move there. Evan Sauter, who came in during that stoppage, is able to score. Yeah, nice little left hand. Columbus Grove, they don't pass up a good shot early. They will take it. More importantly, they will make it. Five different players have already scored for the Bulldogs here. We still have over two and a half minutes to go in our opening quarter. Kick out after Thomas Smith picked up his dribble. Krieger back out at the wing. Will reset the offense. Here comes a high screen. Krieger being guarded by Zach Reynolds. Smith getting inside. A little contact. Basket's good. And he'll have a chance at a three-point play. Uh, Thomas Smith, arguably the best athlete on this Patrick Henry team, attacks the lane, and look at his ability to hang and go through the traffic. See how he kept his eyes up on that shot? Tremendous work by Thomas Smith. The one spot he has struggled at is the free throw line, although he knocks that one down. Came in two tonight, just six of 13 through his uh, first two games this year. Four-point lead for the Bulldogs on our Hawker Drywall scoreboard. They work around the perimeter. They've been able to get inside. It's been a lot of transition baskets. There's the lob in. 
That one it's from the low block, no good. Kylan Mays put up with a shot, couldn't get it to go, and now the Patriots with it. Yeah, it was Matt Kieber that got a part of it, and then finishes on the other end with a little smooch off the high box. It's his first basket tonight, cuts that lead to two. Quickly the other end, here comes the Bulldogs. Three's no good, rebound is fought for. Schrader coming to, uh, comes away with it, then he has the ball knocked out of his hands on a back tap out of bounds. As we will see a couple more substitutions enter the game. You see the camera lady back there in uh, Hawaiian shorts and a bikini top. The whole student section all wearing Hawaiian type stuff. I guess it's a luau here tonight. It must be. Nothing better than a luau in December. You know, the weather's hovering around 40 degrees, so why not? Three ball from the corner doesn't go and skying high for the rebound, Mac Heber. Yeah, Heber has asserted himself on the last couple of possessions on the defensive boards. Heber able to bring the basketball into the front court himself. Uh, no doubt when Krieger leaves the floor that it's going to be Heber that carries the offense as you see back-to-back -back baskets by him. Yeah, nice job with that elbow jumper. Ties this up, 13 all, under a minute to go in quarter number one. A yeah, good response after the timeout by Brian Heber. Patrick Henry has battled back. Hopkins at the point, gets rid of the basketball. I'll reverse it in the left wing. Bernesser, Bernesser, that jump stop, and he's able to draw the foul. Looks like he's going to get a couple of free throws. Well, let's see if it's going to be steps or he's contacted. Working against Thomas Smith. Oof. Thomas Smith, I think he's got a case to litigate that one. Here is Bo Bernesser, the 6'4 senior at 18 a game through the first two. We'll get the first one. The thing I really like about Bernesser, Randy, is he, he lets the game come to him. Like the offense early has not run through him. Mm -hmm. Other guys have gotten points. He's not one of those guys that needs like 50 shots to get 20 points. So he'll knock down both free throws, so he's got four here in the early going. Let's see what Patriots do inside the final 30 seconds of the opening quarter. I've seen a few games already this year where the End of quarter, end of half possessions have not been great. And we'll get a reach call. is going to get the foul on the other end. That's really good help by Krieger coming back. Ball is dead. Comes back. And there's going to be a foul right there. Burnesser going to get called. First one. And probably don't need to contact him. He's going to be 30 feet from the basket. Now off the inbound, this one is going to go the other way. Ball was tipped by Burnesser defending the uh, pass. And I think, is it Thomas Smith picked up the foul? It is going to be Thomas Smith that's whistled for it. So things have got a little muddied up here in the last 15 seconds. And they've got that as the first on Smith. So that last play, we thought Smith had the foul. Apparently that went on someone else. And here's the ball knocked out of bounds. And it looks like... Grove's going to turn it right back over to Patrick Henry. Well, if you're studying situational basketball, do not look at the last 15 seconds of this first quarter. It's BH with three seconds to go. Heber, half court, hangs it a little to the right, and that's how the opening eight minutes of action will end. But it's been a good one so far. 15-13 after one. We'll take a break here on WOSF. 15-13 after a one quarter of action. Columbus Grove with the lead over Patrick Henry. Miles with the eagle eyes brought up a good point. I believe we saw Landon Johnson play. He's out on the floor right now. You see him number three for the Patriots. So whatever was ailing him through the week where uh, head coach Brian Hebert thought he was not going to be available has uh, well, gotten better. He's going to see a little bit of action tonight. Yeah, the information that we'd received from coach it said three guys were going to be out possibly for the whole year. Well, it's good to see Landon Johnson back. Anytime you can get a senior point guard back in your lineup, it's going to make you more volatile offensively. Good move to the cutter inside. It's Lincoln Krieger. Krieger's second effort will roll around the cylinder and fall through and meet our side. Uh, his ability to get off the floor, recognize that missed shot, fantastic. A good ball fake underneath. That one's going to be knocked out of the air as Matt Heber is going to come up with a block. Yeah, most block shots aren't on the guy that's defending. It's a guy that comes and helps. 
And Mac tonight, Mac Heber's second block of the game. It's like when I pick up that second piece of pizza after the night, Miles slaps that out of my hand. <laughs> Off the miss, the backside rebound, and put back good by Bo Burnesser. Oh, Bo, 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 Merry Christmas. How about the left hand? Man size rebound and the finish. 17 15, back and forth we go. Johnson able to get to the basket. That one's going to be tapped out of bounds. Well, this must be the end of the school year for Christmas because it's nothing but a block party here at Columbus Grove. Zach Reynolds will able to get that one. It's Krieger in the end in the paint. His floater's good. So he's up to eight here early on for the Patriots. Oh, very quickly down to the other end will come Columbus Grove, and we'll get a whistle and a foul. That's impressive stuff by Columbus Grove. After a made shot, still being able to run a fast break opportunity and get in front of everybody. Well conditioned Columbus Grove team. Zach Reynolds will head to the free throw line. Thomas Smith's going to pick up his second foul. His first free toss. Is good out of Reynolds. That's his first point tonight. Yeah, the Thomas Smith fouls are kind of weird, right? Because it, he was wrong contact. We had one, and then it was still one, and then he had another foul, and then another one, but it's still only two. It, it's odd. Each one only counts as half. Half, I guess. Well, Reynolds will split the pair. It gives Grove the lead once again. 18 17, you see on our Hawker drywall scoreboard. Here's a loose ball. Ball still loose on the floor, finally picked up by the Bulldogs. They want to move in transition, even numbers right now. Here's the kick out, three from the wings, no good. He saw the arm before he saw the rest of the body of Landon Johnson come away with a miss. Now a tie up as everyone's going to hit the deck as we are playing hard here tonight, partner. Yeah, Barraza kind of, did he back tap it out or was that a pass? by Landon Johnson, but both guys are going to get on the ground, dig it out. Got to love that effort. Arrow favors the Bulldogs, so they'll take over. Great catch by Hopkins. Saved a turnover for Columbus Grove. And Landon Best had the ball momentarily. No one's going to step out and defend Burnesser, so he'll just knock down the three from the top of the key. Yeah, just so, no, not a lot, right? Release, rotation, and especially, hey, you're not going to come out on me? I'll make you pay. I was going to go bow nose triples, but I'll oh, accept that one. Save that one for later. 21 17. Pass cross court's going to take an extra bounce. Johnson can't get it to go. Second effort though by Krieger is up and good. And before Miles can say anything, Grove's just going to beat everyone down the floor again, and Zach Reynolds will score. Oh, I love it. This is the way basketball should be played, right? Don't have to dribble it up and grind through everything offensively. Get it and go. We have been nonstop action here. 23 19 is one nearly taken away. Krieger's double team, but he finds the open man, and a blocking call is going to be called as Mac Ebert is able to draw the foul. Yeah, if you can get it out of the trap areas, out of the corners, you're going to create mismatches right there. Zach Reynolds tries. <laughs> He's even signaling it, Randy. He said, no, that's a charge. Now you're moving, son. Good call by the official staying there. First foul on Reynolds, so the stoppage is a good time to tell you that our scoreboard tonight is brought to you by Hawker Drywall. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can serve you. Groves led this one from most of the way. Patrick Henry was able to come back and tie it here early on in the second quarter. Ball's loose on the floor as Burnester is going to force the turnover. Now we're going to have a push and a foul coming. Now I think this is going to be whistled on Columbus Grove. And it is. Yeah, it's going to be the third man in diving for the basketball. You yeah, see the official shaking his head. No, no. Uh, you can't be the third guy diving on. So that's the second foul on Reynolds. It's one of the ball boys will also man the uh, what do we call that? Squeegee? I guess. The mop? Yeah, the mop. How about those glasses in the student section? Those are fantastic. I wonder what gas station you got those at. PH able to get the inbound from side court. Comes out to the wing, Krieger. Krieger. Got, got to be aware of Krieger with a dribble drive. He'll step back, fires away from deep. That one a little too strong. 
Rebound, one of the rare times, actually got away from Reynolds. Reynolds inadvertently nearly clipped NWO style by Jaden Punches. Yeah, Punches slides into him, going to commit the foul. But if you're Columbus Grove, you got to be happy Lincoln Krieger settling for a perimeter jumper. If you're Columbus Grove, you want to see him shoot jumpers, not attacking the glass. One of the rare times the Bulldogs are going to walk the ball into the front court. And now we're going to have an off-ball foul called here. So far away from the ball, I don't think our cameras even picked it up. Now they're going to call it on Mays. The big six foot one wide body trying to establish position inside. See, you can't do that. You can't use the forearm to get yourself free. It's going to be his second, team's third. So Grove still with a foul to give with four and a half minutes to go before halftime. Wayne Jackson at the point, gives it off to the wing. Heber will get rid of it to Krieger. See Brian Schurnt in the lineup. This one's going to be taken away. Braza just kind of threw that up for grabs at midcourt. Patch Henry's going to get that one back. And now more extracurricular activity going on here. Yeah, gonna get a little fancy dribbling. Watch this, Heber gonna work one-on-one -on -one with Reynolds. Gonna go behind the back, Reynolds is gonna forearm shove him. That's gonna be a foul and then, yeah, Mack let him know a little bit. See the little forearm right back at him. Had a couple words for him too. It's the second on Reynolds, fourth team foul whistled the quarter against Grove. So the next one will put PH in what is now the I one guess we just call right, it the, the, the one regular one. bonus. Is it the double bonus? I thought they brought back the one-on-one -on -one for this. Uh, yeah. I know you you had your letter-writing campaign. Still you know, do. You had a strongly worded email sent to the OHSAA office. It said, I don't like. Sure missed the one-on-one. -on -one. The yeah, suspense, I, the drama of it. Tough spot picking up his dribble. Jackson can't get the shot to go. The... Uh, I heard that the board of control appreciated the crayons and the art on the back side of the note. <laughs> I wanted to be artistic with my drawings. Let them know I didn't like the, it. The simple me no like he didn't work. Three ball from the wing doesn't go. That was Hopkins. He had the first uh, three go down to start this game. But a little bit of a struggle since. The Krieger with a left hand able to drive. Doesn't get it to go, but it looks like he's going to go to the free throw line. Well, I think at halftime, Brian Heber is going to say to his guys, if you're wearing number two and number 11, feel free to drive anytime you want because they have no answer one-on-one. -on -one. Lincoln Krieger has just been a wrecking ball anytime he's gone to the basket. It's now going to be the uh, second foul on best. So Columbus Grove starting to get into a little bit of foul trouble as Krieger is unable to uh, make the first one. There is the new free throw rules. That's done more for me than anything else. It's, they lost I, I me at the top line. No more one-on-one. -on -one. I was done after that. I, I could not believe. I, I miss it, Randy. I miss it so. Krieger able to split the free throws. Now, he was in the act of shooting, so it would have been two shots anyways. All right, I'll give you that. 23-20 so now, the Bulldogs lead. Burness are trying to go baseline. He is cut off their good defense. Yeah, Landon Johnson, great job of closing it out to the low block. Trent Barraza will give this one into the corner. Stutter step, the move. And now the elbow jumper. That one hits off the heel of the arm. Lincoln Krieger with a miss. Krieger trying to quickly bring this one into the front court. Into the paint. And he can't get it to go. And Burnesser just out jumps everyone. Also helps being a six foot four guy on the floor to get the rebound. Oh, trying to get under the basket, a little too far under there. That one is no good. Now, Zevin Sauter, great job of getting the contact. He believed he was going to get a foul call, but didn't make the layup. Now, the Patriots have slowed things down with Landon Johnson. Scoring is uh, slowed down a little bit since our uh, opening frame. Action's picked up. Now what a matchup here, Krieger and Barraza. 
Krieger with a kick out, three ball splashes in. Calvin Schrader. And Schrader, 50% on the year, 100% that time. Big time three, all knotted up. And now Hopkins back in the front court for the Bulldogs. Trying to clear everyone out. I don't know if he's trying to go one on one with Johnson. Trying to get a little bit of space. He picks up his dribble. Burnesser will help him out. Yeah, a little bit of slowness to the offense, but that's okay when you got Big Bo that will bail you out. He'll take care of that. He's got 11 of the 25 as the Bulldogs have jumped back in front here. Under a minute to go in our opening half. A smart play by Patrick Henry, bringing that zone pressure towards the baseline, give them a spot in the middle of the floor. Smart little coaching point right there by Brian Heber. The wing, here's Smith. Smith comes top of the key, a little crossover move, some contact. Runner doesn't go, good rebound. Pulled down by Grove, and now Slip's gonna lead to a travel. Well, oh, Court Monster comes up and bites. Trevon Baxter. Yeah, it's kind of a weird play. Gotta have shoes that work. Baxter with a turnover. It might have been a layup opportunity for Columbus Grove. Hit the uh, one slick spot on the floor. Someone didn't put the oil dry down after an oil change. So the pH of the uh, PH Patriots trying to do here in the final 20 seconds of the half. And I remember the first quarter, they're going to run it out and get the last shot, but we had three possessions in that last 15 seconds. See if they execute situational basketball better. Johnson able to hang on to the basketball. Now Heber step inside the arc. He's going to air mail it. Rebound is grabbed, but out of bounds. And so with four seconds to go in the half, Grove will get one final opportunity. Now if you're Patrick Henning, make sure you put someone on the ball here. Don't give him a free pass in. Does come in quickly ahead. Burnesser, time for a couple dribbles, and it's going to hit the top of the backboard. Good look, but it doesn't go, and that's how our first half will end, but an entertaining one here in Grove. 25-23 Bulldogs, and we'll have the second half for you after this on WOSN. Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you here from Columbus Grove. 25-23, Bulldogs lead the Patriots by a couple here at the half. It's been... Uh, very entertaining first half of basketball so far, partner. Yeah, good call by you. And it looked like it's gonna be a little bit of a runaway by Columbus Pro, but that timeout by Brian Heber rallied his guys and they responded, showed a lot of character, tied this thing back up before Columbus Grove got the two point lead. So very uh, interesting setup for our crew here in the Columbus Grove as uh, we uh, work at least our crew for the first time here in uh, Putnam County. Well, this part of Putnam County, we've been to Putnam County. We, we have and we're allowed back. Uh, my first time to Columbus Grove uh, for basketball, yours too, right? I, that's what I was trying to remember down through the years if I've been to Grove or not. That's a fantastic setup. Everybody's super nice. And yeah. There's our the best view of our camera guy, Curtis, right there. He looks that's good. his best side. And where, where they set us up, Randy, they know us because we're right by the restrooms. You guys upstairs, right through the drive through window, restrooms behind us. This is great. One of our cameramen uh, known as Robo apparently has joined the Bandit Grove. Up the dump down underneath and the easy finish to begin the second half by Mac Heber. Yeah, great design coming out of the halftime. Getting Heber a touch in close, knotting this back up at 25. Here is Landon Best trying to get a little bit of room. Knocked down, but a very physical opening half of play. Yeah, it's kind of what Columbus Grove wants to do. A lot of their points come off of that defensive intensity. Remember, they average 18 steals or deflections per game. Speaking of deflection, there's a deflection right out of play. Ball will stay with the Bulldogs. It looks like the uh, Patriots will not put anyone on the inbounder. Yeah, they missed it. Braz on a dive down to the opposite block. He had himself a layup, but they saw him too late. Loose ball on the floor, and the Patriots will save a possession by calling a quick timeout. Yeah, first one on the floor, Patrick Henry. There's Lincoln Krieger getting it, and then Coach Heber alertly calls the timeout to save possession before they call travel. And Randy, is there a more impressive guy 
than Lincoln Krieger. Think about what he did in the fall. Receiver, they needed him to play quarterback after Nash Meyer went out. All he did was set the school record for touchdown passes in a game. And then they have a point guard go out early this year in basketball. Hey, Lincoln, can you run the point for us? Okay. What a great athlete for Patrick Henry. Uh, his brother, uh, younger brother, Reed, was going to be uh, an incoming freshman, one of two guys, along with the aforementioned Nash Meyer, out for the year. So this was a Patrick Henry team, lofty expectations through the offseason, still picked to win their uh, NWOAL. Them, along with uh, Archibald, Wasion, Evergreen, the top half there. Yeah, the Archibald team, three scores on that one. They're going to be a fun matchup with Patrick Henry when they play. And that, once again, will be the uh, final week of the regular season. It's kind of funny how that always works out, huh? Entry pass, tipped around, but ends up into the hands of Heber. Heber, good turnaround, gets a little space, left that one short. Burnesser with the miss. Now Patrick Henry starting to leak someone out defensively, knowing that Grove likes to get out and run. Trent Barraza had an opportunity. He's going to draw the foul. Yeah, but if you're an offensive coordinator in football, and you got a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Barraza working against Jackson. You like that. Same, same concept works here in basketball. Barraza gets the vertical pass. So Barraza will get a couple of free throws here. Held to just two points that opening half. Now make it three is the first charity toss is good. So breaks our tie once again. Our scoreboard tonight. Brought to you by Hawker Drywall. Free throws are split. Hebert comes away with a miss. Uh, Hebert got up and got that one, didn't he? Six foot five. He's got some verticality in those legs as well. We've seen him throw one down before. Patriots now the opportunity to take the lead. There's the entry pass. Hebert gets time with the kick out. Smith dumps it back to Heber. Heber from the corner. Can't get that one to go. Rebound is fought for. Krieger with it. Somehow everyone stayed in play. And the Patriots will get a second opportunity. That one's going to be sent out. But we get a whistle before that. Yeah, you got to credit Bunches, though. Bunches saves this basketball from being turned over on the rebound. Gets another possession. And before the blocked shot, there's going to be contact. Heber's going to go to the line. Kyle Hopkins is going to pick up his second. First of the quarter, whistled on the Bulldogs. And now here is Mac Heber at the line. First one is no good. Heber, 12 to 16 from the charity strike through the first two games of the year. Will split the pair, and that ties us yet again. Hey, you just get the feeling this is going to come down to like the last three minutes of this game. Neither team can really get some big distance. Good switch defensively, kept someone on landing best. Well, you better pay attention when Reynolds sets a screen. There was some chicklets, and that time he rolls off the screen, gets it a low block. Hasn't been a lot of uh, low post offense for Columbus Grove, but they take advantage of it that time. And a nice job with the uh, entry pass. Reynolds able to finish. And now we'll get a whistle, and do we have a 10 second call? Yeah, referee signaled 10. Didn't get it over, and uh, I think there's something on the floor in front of the uh, Patrick Henry bench. And the officials are going to hold up play here momentarily. The referee did. He put two two fives up in the air, unless it was, oh, I think that's a little bit of blood. So I do see a couple droplets of blood. So while they get that cleaned up, we'll step aside and take a break here on WOSF. That looks like everything has uh, been cleaned up, but we believe that uh, Jaden punches the guilty party. And he's holding his nose. Looks like he, there's blood everywhere on that Patrick Henry sideline. Good job by Columbus Grove cleaning it up. Braza with the three is no good. Patriots get the miss. They quickly bring the ball into the front court. Smith cutting to the basket as the defender climbing all over him. Draws the contact, and he's going to have a chance at a three-point play. Now it's going to be Kyle Hopkins. There's a picture of Punches. He's leaving the floor, holding his nose. Poor young man. Hope we get him back. And that's a big loss for Patrick Henry. He has that size and rebound ability. It is the third foul on Kyle Hopkins. Right. So he will sit down. Anytime you trail through the key, bad things happen. Three-point opportunity, old-fashioned style. Thomas Smith converts. He's got eight points tonight. More importantly, puts the uh, Patriots ahead. One of the rare times they've led this one. 
Five minutes left to go in our third quarter. A little weave action up top for the Bulldogs. Miranda weave and try to get Burnesser rolling towards the hoop off of it. Well defended by Patrick Henry. Wanted to give to the cutter on the baseline, who that time was Sauter. Pull up jumper, that one's gonna be deflected. And the Patriots come away with a basketball and now they'll have numbers. Heber trying to get right to the basket, double team. That's not gonna stop him, puts it in. Has a man-sized move by Heber. Big Mac delivers. He's got nine, it looks like he took a shot to the face as well. This one knocks free, he's getting after it defensively, Lane Jackson. Well, remember in our pregame, Randy, we did the keys, like the correct matchup. How are they gonna match up on their perimeter? Patrick Henry, that is. Well, what they've decided to do is they just switch everything out top and then look for help. So it doesn't matter who's on who, they're just gonna switch everything beyond the three-point line. You also said bunches of punches, and I don't think that that meant literally. Right, right, right. I wanted uh, punches to be solid inside. Poor guy got a bloody nose. Three ball, the answer in the other end. That one's gonna be good. And Barraza knocks it down. The gamesmanship between the two teams continues, running down to the other end of the floor. Yeah, Barraza, he's a big time player. And what do big time players do? They make big time shots. None bigger there, it ties this one up 31 all. Uh, we roll inside the second half of our third quarter. Hebert at the wing is gonna find Lincoln Krieger. Krieger back up top, Smith. Smith, nice little crossover move. His runner off the window and in. Yeah, went through a defender, kept his eyes on that top window. Gets the high glass smooch. Patch Kenner playing out in front of a dead move, able to weave through. Landon Best able to score for the Bulldogs. They see why Landon Best has averaged 14 a game early in the season. The ability to create on his own. It's the second basket tonight, good for four points. We're tied once again. Barraza trying to get into the shorts of uh, Jackson. Now the Bulldogs do force the turnover. Here's Reynolds. Reynolds to the basket, trying to shield the ball away from the would-be defenders, Lincoln Krieger wanted to take a big swipe of the basketball. All coaches tell you if nobody stops ball, take it all the way to the window. Ooh, that is a forearm across the nose. That had to hurt. Reynolds can't get the ball, but he's gonna shoot twice. Second uh, foul on Krieger. First free throw is left short. And Krieger's been a little bit quiet to start to the second half. Columbus Grove doing a better job of denying him the basketball early in possessions. Kylan Mays returns to the lineup for the Bulldogs. As Reynolds is able to split the free throws, he's got six points now tonight. As Columbus Grove moves back in front by one. This has been very entertaining basketball game as we thought it might be. PH trying to add on to its two game win streak against Grove. Well, if they're going to do it, you got to believe Heber and Krieger will be a big part of it. When knocked out of bounds, Reynolds was just trying to get to a spot defensively. That was more uh, just defensive, getting the hands up so he didn't take a basketball to the face. Yeah, he got the left arm up just in time. Inbound has to be thrown into the backcourt where Lincoln Krieger will go get it. You've got to be really careful with the passing lanes because Columbus Grove is so active, first with their feet and then with their hands. Krieger creates space. Well, partner, he's uh, picked it up here. Sure has. You must have heard us talking that he's been quiet to start this half. Long pass ahead. This time it was for Evan Sauter, unable to get there. One of the rare times Columbus Grove has made a mistake like that. The ball is turned back over to the Patriots. Now on the way down the floor, Barraza kind of ran into Lincoln Krieger. The two exchanged uh, addresses for Christmas cards. This has been a heated they've, game. They've, they've spent a lot of time getting to know each other. A little miscommunication for Patrick Henry, Krieger, and Heber not knowing which guy was supposed to go to the wing, trying to talk things over. Krieger with it, had it momentarily. Uh, good to see punches back on the floor for Patrick Henry. He is 
Heber. Heber thought about going baseline. Instead gets it out to Punches. Punches with a kick out. Heber a little bit out of control is going to be called for the travel. Yeah, see Heber catch it on the wing. Work one on one. You got to give Landon Best a lot of credit. He just kept giving ground, giving ground. Pulled the chair out from underneath him. Gets the traveling call out of it. Columbus Grove will take the basketball back. Down one, under a minute and a half left to go. Third quarter. Best walks this one into the front court. Now Burnesser got the lob. Loose ball comes right back to him, and now Heber's going to be called for the foul. That's a fortuitous bounce if there's ever one. Well, Patrick Henry wants to know why is that not a block? Uh, Braza contacts Krieger, and the ball goes flying out. Got a pretty good argument there. Usually there's contact out there. Somebody did something wrong. First foul on Heber, third of the quarter against the Patriots here with one and change to go. Left open from the wing was a Burnesser. Three's no good. Offensive rebound. No one's in the lane. Wild shot put up no good by Sauter. Put back is no good. Burnesser's going to have the third opportunity ripped away from him. The officials are going to talk this one through. It's going to be a jump ball arrow to stay with the Bulldogs. Now, Burnesser had a couple of bunnies underneath right there all by himself, just a little bit short on it, brings it down, and that's going to be Landon Johnson that reaches in and gets it tied up. If you dunk it there, you don't have that problem. That's what I always do. I know that sounds weird coming from the 5'9 guy, but fadeaway jumper from the elbows, no good. Burnesser's fourth rebound this trip. Keeps it alive for the Bulldogs. Entry pass in for Mays. Mays trying to turn around. Lobs that one up over everyone. Catches both sides of the iron before Heber pulls down the miss. Yeah, you're going to have to be a man inside the rest of this game. Physicality is going to reign supreme. Heber no look pass. Here's Thomas Smith. Smith gets in the lane. going to hang in the air. And that one's going to be a goaltending. They're going to wave that one off. Right idea. But I don't think you're allowed to hang on the rim to get your own miss. Is this going to be a technical, though, Randy? If you hang on the rim, it's a technical foul. That's what Columbus Grove is arguing. I just want to hang on the rim and grab my own shot and dunk it once in my life. Thomas Smith. How about that jumping ability and the upper body strength to finish? Uh, One of those things where he really had nowhere to go with a missed basketball. Is hung there. Couldn't do anything with it. Three in the other end. Opportunity no good by Best. Another offensive rebound. That miss. Smith goes side to side to come up with this one. Smith's going to take on the entire defense from half court. Can't get it. Thought about it. We're going to take a look at this one more time. Come on. The challenge. Ugh. And then the right hand with the dunk delicious. Unfortunately, it's all for naught. The third quarter comes to an end. 35-34 Patriots. We'll see what the fourth quarter has in store for us when we return. Brady and Miles back with you here. Fourth quarter just about ready to start. We're going to take a look at this dunk one more time as Miles is going to explain why there wasn't a technical called here. Yeah, it hangs on it. Uh, they said, I guess they, yeah, there's nobody underneath them, so he could have landed and he did land. And you'll see the top side official come in say hey he was hanging on the rim that's a technical but I think they say that's enough and yeah, just Great. take it away I had the discussion with the uh, Columbus Grove bench but uh, I don't know if they thought just uh, a reactionary play ball was missed he, he won it went in for the miss just one of those things you don't really think about as foul's going to be called here to begin our fourth quarter so not only that but a PH with the opening possession here of the quarter that Krieger recognized that Mays had switched on to him. Mays, a big fella, just not as quick a foot, so he took him to the hole, drew the foul. It's going to be the uh, third foul on Mays. Nine seconds into our uh, fourth quarter. Here's Heber, the inbound. We're going to get a whistle and make another quick foul called against the Bulldogs. Yeah, Burnesser's going to get caught with his hand in the cookie jar, leaving his man going to help out, try to get the steal, but contacted the arm and two quick fouls. For, pa- for Columbus Grove, and more importantly, that's a third on Burnesser. A substitution now, Zach Reynolds is going to re-enter. Reynolds with some foul trouble. Krieger created a little space to get open, but his shot attempt is blocked. Now all sorts of action down on the baseline. 
And Columbus Grove is going to come away with the basketball, and as they have done all night, they get down the floor. Kyle Hawkins beats everyone down. This time he's contested by Mac Ebert. Looks like Ebert picked up the foul. Well, Barraza had a block on the other end, and then working one-on-one -on -one is Hopkins. And that looked clean from our side, but the backside official said there was body underneath. And that's going to be the call. So the second whistle on Heber, it will send Kyle Hopkins with five points. Now he'll have six to the free throw line. Hopkins got started with that quick three. And he's contributed in other ways. But now he'll have the opportunity to put his team back in front. So make both free throws. Still early on in the fourth quarter, but the guy on the announce team with a 4 a.m. flight to Florida definitely <laughs> wants overtime. I don't know if I'm going to sleep anyhow. If we can play this game all night, let's do it. This is a lot of fun. Here's a takeaway. Hopkins trying to get his feet set. He's going to go for the layup. That one's going to be pinned on the backboard. It went through anyways. The goaltending is going to be the call on Heber. Oh, you better not sleep when number 11 is around because... He's got that unbelievable jumping ability. And then watch the reach right here. Still gets a part of it. Look at Heber. Oh, Heber actually a... helped that go in, but again, he can't pin it against the backboard Shades. at the high school level. Shades of uh, Tayshaun Prince against the Pacers for the Detroit Pistons. Not the uh, current Pistons, who I understand have lost a game or two. Yeah, they're struggling a little bit, huh? Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Chris Krieger's trying to get inside, no call. Burnesser will cross the contact. The Krieger will get the bucket and we play on. Yeah, I kind of like the call actually, right? No harm, no foul, he makes the shot, not a ton of contact. Burnesser wasn't really in possession, in position. That would have been the fourth foul on Burnesser had he been called for a block. Hopkins with a kick out, here's Burnesser the other end. That went halfway down, Heber with the rebounds, quickly double team. He'll find Krieger. You know, a little run and jump defense here out of Columbus Grove as the Patriots bring this into the front court. Yeah, well handled because the best two ball handlers on the team for Patrick Henry currently on the floor. Krieger and Heber brought it up. Wayne Jackson takes over at the point. Smith with it. I don't know if there's a guy on the floor right now for the Patriots that wouldn't do well with a basketball in his hands. I'm not sure Columbus Grove should go all the way out on Thomas Smith. I'd turn him into a jump shooter from here on out. He has shown that he can get by you. Krieger trying to create a little bit of space. Well, the extra pass here is Smith. Smith trying to get into the lane. Gets his defender in the air. Can't get it to go. It's a good look. Quickback's going to be no good because the foul from behind. And it looks like Matt Kieber is going to go to the free throw line. Yeah, Matt Kieber just working without the basketball. Gets underneath. He beats his man to the spot, gets underneath and gets the rebound. It was Landon Best that was guarding him that kind of lost track. So Heber with nine points, steps to the line, and it will stay at nine as the free throw hits off the heel of the iron a couple of times. I hit everything, hit the top of the backboard. Have one more opportunity here to try to tie this one up. That one. Rattles out halfway down the cylinder, spits up. A tough trip for Heber. Two looked like they were going to go down, both popped out. Grove playing with a little purpose now, up one. We'll give and go with Barraza, and Barraza is able to find the bucket. Barraza now with eight as the Patriots quickly bring it into the front court. A good find by Burnesser. Well-called play by Coach Coles over there. A nice little two-man game. Set that up. Puts the uh, Bulldogs in front by three here, 40-37. to 37. Here's the entry pass. Getting its punches. Turn around. That one misses wild. And now we've got a foul trying to knock the ball out of the hands of Zach Reynolds after he had the rebound. Yeah, I think punches would have been all right there had he just shot a regular jump shot. Tries to go with the one hand. I think, are they going to get Thomas Smith? They are. It's going to be his third foul for Patrick Henry. 
And Reynolds might have won an Academy Award to help out there with the uh, acting <laughs> job. <laughs> Got to sell it a little bit, right? Bulldogs with the basketball. No one picks up Burdester. He'll roll to the basket, lay it in. That caught punches trailing. Thought he's going to set a screen over top of it and then dope to the low block. Five out offense, reigning supreme for Columbus Grove. Yeah, the Pat Kenner Patriots want to talk about it. They're going to take a timeout. We'll take one as well here. 42 37 Grove. We'll be back right after this. 42 37, our score in our Hawker Drywall scoreboard. And visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. 417 left to play. Patriots doing a good job at staying in this one. Weathered that early start. Grove led by, I believe it was 7, 11 to 4. Quick timeout taken by the Patriots. This one's been back and forth since then. Now let's see if they respond the same way after the timeout in the first half by Brian Heber. Krieger with the dribble handoff. Comes top of the key. Leaves it for Smith. Smith trying to find someone open. About to back it out and reset the offense with Matt Heber. Heber has the ball poked away. Columbus Grove okay with letting Patrick Kenner run some time off the clock, up five. Getting inside and Travel's going to be the call as Calvin Schrader rubbed that pivot foot with him behind. Yeah, Schrader, but he's contacted a little bit, but they'll let you do that as long as it's not the arms. A smart basketball by Hopkins using the lower half to kind of contact Schrader. Then helped out the official with the travel call. Just but yeah, didn't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, sometimes they appreciate that, right? They say, "Yeah, I got it right, son. Good call." Unlike the other night, where apparently one word said to the official, Miles and I had a game where uh, one one word was the difference between a basket and a tech. You can't say "and one." Officials don't like that. That resulted in a technical foul. So remember that, young kids. Don't say "and one" to an official. It's your public service announcement for the night. <laughs> Pull up jumper from the elbow. A good look off the curl. Playing the best now with six. Now Patrick Henry snacking on danger right now. Got to get a bucket on this. Down by seven. And we roll under three minutes left to play. Bieber sends this over to Thomas Smith. Smith trying to get into the lane. I wanted to give it into the corner, but everyone was moving. So Heber will hang in the air. Left that one short. Reynolds with a rebound. Dare we say Reynolds wraps both arms around him. Oh, I like it. Connor Coles gets up, says, guys, let's slow it down a little bit. Clock is our friend up by seven. Let's get the shot that we want. And apparently that's a Hopkins three who buries it. Now they called that set. Hopkins who had the big three to start, a bigger one in the fourth quarter. Hopkins now with 12 as the lead's grown to double digits. Pat Henry trying to answer, and they do, as Krieger hits it from the top of the key, and Patrick Henry will use one of its two remaining timeouts. Oh, boy, how about the drama? First on the one, and it was Hopkins, and Krieger says, I see you, Cat. I can do it, too. A 47-40, just over two minutes left to play. We'll take a break here in WOSF. 47-40, Columbus Grove with the lead over Patrick Henry here, still 2:09. Left to play in this one. As the Patriots got a big answer out of a Grove three. Now, Trent Barraza in the down floor. It looks like he is a little hurt. Hits the deck after the basket. Patrick Henry tried to quickly get the uh, inbound in, but the officials are going to wave this one off here. Well, you got to credit Connor Coles out of that timeout, knowing that Patrick Henry is going to have to pick up the pressure down points. A great execution by what he drew up. And again, it was Hopkins that delivered a pass to Barraza. And good news for Columbus Grove. Barraza looks like he's going to be okay. Yeah, he was able to. He took some contact after that. And it looks like instead of having Barraza sit, it's Grove that's going to use a timeout so they can get him back into the lineup. So with a timeout on the floor, we'll take another one here on WOSN. A 49 of 40, and still a minute 59 and counting left to go as Columbus Grove will use its uh, first time out of the night. Trying to get Trent Barraza back in the lineup. Looks like he's fighting a little bit of a cramp. Pat Henry able to score on the other end of the floor. Yeah, good job not fouling by Columbus Grove. Now trying to force the turnover. 
the Grove able to bring this one into front court. Keeping two players around the basketball at all times. Patrick Henry trying to get this one. Now let's see how long they'll let this go before they commit a foul. They do there with a minute 27 to go. Patrick Henry foul is on Lincoln Krieger. That's going to be his third. Third foul this quarter. So Patrick Henry still with one more to give. Under 90 seconds to play. Inbound comes in. A move Landon Best. Best to get it to Braza. Able to re-enter the line at Braza. Might have gotten away with a the travel there. As Columbus Grove continue to run some time off this clock. Seven point game with a minute 15 to play. Burnesser in the corner. Double team. Kick out. Comes back out to Best. Now everyone just directing traffic. Middle of the lane is Hopkins back with the kick out as this one still moves side to side. No foul being committed yet. Burnesser left open under the basket, not looking his way as Grove has done a very nice job moving this around. Finally, the foul committed with 53 seconds to play. It will be the fourth on Krieger. Also the last foul to give, the next one will send Columbus Grove to the free throw line for the two shot bonus. But before that, it looks like Columbus Grove wants to use a quick timeout as they wanted to avoid a five second call. So with the timeout, we'll take a break here on WOSN. Columbus Grove taking a quick timeout to avoid a five second call. It went a Lose a possession to the Patriots, up seven here, just under a minute left to play. Inbound quickly comes in, foul committed. About a second and a half is burnt off the clock, and now this will become a free throw shooting contest for the remainder of this one. Kyle Hopkins with 12 tonight, step to the line, and he's going to get a couple of tosses here with 51 and a half seconds to play. His first free throw, it hit the heel of the iron, no good. Hopkins second attempt, that one will rattle around and drop in. Gives him 13, extends that lead to eight. Still three possessions here, now with 45 seconds to play. Heber to go baseline, thought about the dunk. He's going to get the bucket, and he'll have a chance at a three-point play. So Mac Heber getting into double digits now with 11, and a big free throw here. Try to make this a five-point game as he just goes baseline and scores. So here is Mac Heber, the sophomore, at the line, and the free throw is good. 50 to 45, 40 seconds left. Long pass ahead. Barraza had a nice job laying off defensively. Schrader didn't want the foul. Didn't want to make it worse. It'll give up the bucket to Barraza. Extends that lead back to seven. Krieger, wing three, can't get it to go. Rebound spot four. And it is Columbus Grove that'll have it. Burnesser, the long pass ahead. And now the Columbus Grove Bulldogs thought about running off the final seconds. Now Thomas Smith commits a foul, 14.6 to play. It's going to be the fourth called on Smith. Landon Best with six points tonight. We'll get a couple of free throws. First free throw is no good, and Best will get one more. Second one on its way as Best will split the pair. And now Patch Henry, one more opportunity here nearing 10 seconds to go. Smith into the lane. That one will roll around the cylinder, drop in. All Columbus Grove really needs to do is inbound the basketball. They'll do so. Triple team comes, but that's going to be it as the final second run off the clock. And the final score tonight here from Columbus Grove. We'll see the hometown Bulldogs 
with a Preston win tonight. They stay undefeated on the young season as they get a 53-47 win over the Patrick Henry Patriots. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll head down to the floor. Miles Holiday will be joined by our Stolle Insurance Hustle Award winner when we return. A Columbus Grove improves to 3-0 and with the 53-47 win tonight over the Bulldogs. Or I'm sorry, Columbus Grove gets the win over the Patriots. Patrick Henry, and we'll head down to the floor as our Miles Holiday is with our Stolle Insurance Hustle Award winner tonight, Kyle Hopkins. Uh, Kyle, uh, average only four points a game coming in tonight, but big explosion for you, 13 points. Were you just feeling good? The offense flo uh, was kind of flowing through you? Uh, yeah, the offense gave me the ball. Uh, I've been averaging four a lot, so I came in before school, got a lot of shots up, and it translated over to the game today. You had a big three to start this game, and then you had to one in the corner down here to make it a 10-point game. Uh, which one felt better? Uh, the corner. I mean, the crowd got wild. It was just an awesome moment for me. What'd you say to the Patrick Henry fans that, on that, that first one? Kind of let them know you're going to be there the rest of the night? Yeah, they are just talking, so I just had to shut them up. So, yeah. Uh, nothing shuts them up better than a made shot. This was a highly contested basketball game. A lot of fun with this intensity? Yeah, I mean, I came into the game. The student section was big, and I just knew it was going to be a really good game. All right, last question for you, then you're going to get your half-court shot. Christmas right around the corner. What do you want? Uh, this is why I wanted a win against Patrick Henry. This is a great win. Great answer. All right, here we go. Santa Claus got you a win. Let's see if he can get you a half-court shot. Oh, that looks good. Oh, congratulations, our player of the game. He was absolutely amazing. Yeah, ended up uh, tying for the team lead in points. Uh, both Hopkins, Bo Burnesser with 13 to lead the uh, Bulldogs. With Trent Barraza adds 12, 53-47. Again, the final Columbus Grove. Gets the win. You can check out the highlights of tonight's Sally Insurance Hustle Award winner later on on the WOSN YouTube page. We want to thank everyone for making our night here in Columbus Grove a possible, starting with uh, Terry Schnipke, the athletic director here at Grove High School. Can't thank Curtis Saldrich enough for the work he's done on the camera. And of course, Ken Reeker here, who, uh, along with his duties as producer and director, had to play hall monitor setup here, the unique setup that we've got here at Columbus Grove. But uh, everything worked out, and we're able to uh, bring you tonight's basketball. So, again, 53-47, Columbus Grove snaps a two-game losing streak to the Patriots. Patch Henry, they get the win tonight for my partner, Miles Holiday, and our entire WOSN crew. I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching, everyone.